You know, one of the reasons we use a page builder like Elementor, Beaver Builder, Thrive Architect, etc. is because of convenience. For example, on most websites, there is a standard call to action that is used all over the website. You read a blog, you scroll down all the way to the bottom, there is a call to action. And you visit another article, you scroll down all the way, you see the same call to action. And this can be achieved with templates on page builders. But do you know you can do that with Gutenberg? And on top of that, you can use the same Gutenberg template on any other websites as well. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Today is all about convenience with Gutenberg. Now, I think what I'm about to share with you today is an overlooked feature that could potentially save you a lot of time, especially if you are a freelancer who builds a lot of web pages every day, or you are a site owner who manages a team of content creators and you're looking for consistency using Gutenberg. And if you are someone who who is familiar with Gutenberg, you know sometimes it could be frustrating when you spend so much time configuring a particular blog and you realize you have to shift that blog to another part of the page, but you can't do that easily. Now, if you already know what I'm talking about, you've probably already figured something out, but if not, you're in for a treat. I'm going to share with you several Gutenberg editor tips to make your life easier. So let's go. Hey, this is Jack and if this is your first time on my channel, I focus a lot on WordPress tutorials with Gutenberg blogs and my main focus is to help you get a site speed of 90 plus on Google PageSpeed Insights and if that's your goal, then subscribe and I hope to constantly bring value to you. Anyway, let's start with the most basic of all which is to use a forward slash to pick a Gutenberg blog. So I'm on a WordPress Gutenberg blog editor and if you already know which Gutenberg blog you intend to use, for example, a row layout, you don't need to click this add blog button and then search for the blog. That requires you to move your mouse, click and then search. In fact, all you need to do is on this paragraph blog where you can see you can type all this stuff in here. This is basically the paragraph blog. Hit the forward slash and you'll see a bunch of options here. And for this example, we want the row layout. So I will just type in the first few letters and you'll see the row layout here. You can use the up down arrow key on your keyboard to select the blog you want to use and hit enter. And there you go. I've just saved you two seconds. Now, I don't know if this is helpful to you, but you basically skip a step by clicking the add blog button. Okay, if that's silly enough, let's go to the next. And trust me, you definitely want to stick around because the last few tips are going to help you out a lot. And feel free to use the timestamps in the description as well to skip ahead. So I won't be wasting your time if you already know these tips. Now you need to understand this important differentiation. There are individual blocks like these and there are nested blocks like this. For individual blocks, if you click on it, you can basically shift it around the page easily. Or you can even click on this and drag to whatever location you want it to be. Now, the problem comes when you have a nested block like this. A nested block is basically a single block that is stacked on top of different layers. As you can see at the bottom over here, I've just selected the image block, but this image block is stacked on top of the section layer and the section layer is stacked on top of the row layout layer. So if you click on this up and down arrow, you will realize that you can only shift this block within the nested layers and you can't shift it out of the nested layers. And sometimes I don't know if this happened to you. You spend a lot of time editing and designing this particular block. Like for example, if you have selected an image overlay block and then you spend a lot of time doing all these settings over here. And then you realize you gotta put this image overlay block somewhere outside of this nested area. So for example, over here, but all you can shift is up to this point and you can shift it outside of the nested layer. And this is frustrating. This was one of the problems I faced in the past when I was still a beginner to Gutenberg blocks. And I had to spend extra time redesigning the block at a place where I needed to be. And it was such a waste of time. But do you know you can just click this? and drag it out of the place and voila, it becomes an individual block. For individual blocks, you can actually see the layers here, the document, which is this article, it is not stacked on top of any other layers. And I think you can even drag a nested layer. So for example, over here, we want to add another row layout. If I put an image here and I put some text here, 
So now if I want to drag this row layout that contains this image and this text, let me click this and drag this out. And you see this nested blocks breaking free from the original nested layers. But this method is a little tricky because at this point in time, when you drag it out of the area, it does not give you an indication where your drag block will land. And in some cases, you need precision because you may be dragging out a nested block into another nested block. So for example, if I add a row layout here and I want to drag this nested block over here, so this gets a little tricky. If you click this and we try to put it in here, there is no indication whatsoever. So I'm going to show you a better way that will give you precision. So this is my recommended method to shift blocks around. For example, this is the nested block I've just created. So let's select this row layout, which I want to shift it out to another location. All you need to do is to click on these three dots, which are the options, and then select copy. And then you can go to wherever you want to paste this. For example, below this, over here, right click, paste. And you'll see this nested block paste here. And then you got to make sure that if you don't need this, you just need to remove it by clicking the options and remove block. And that's basically it. So this is really the easiest way to shift things around in the WordPress editor with accuracy. And if you want to be even more efficient, then I'm going to show you how to use reusable blocks to manage all your calls to action and any other templates for ease of use. So for example, I've created this call to action after writing the article and I really like this and I want to use it on other pages of the site as well. But I don't want to always visit this page and copy and paste this entire section and paste it over to other pages. And I obviously don't want to waste my time to rebuild this call to action because it may not be consistent. So all you need to do is to leverage on this overlook feature that the WordPress Gutenberg editor has, which is reusable blocks. So let's just say I click on one of the blocks and then if I want to select every single element in this call to action, you need to select the base layer. And so basically by clicking this and you look over to the bottom left, you will see all the layers that the element is stacking on top. So you want to select the base layer, which is this row layout. Once you select this, you'll see that the entire call to action is selected. And then all you need to do is to click on this options and then you want to add to reusable blocks. Now let me open up three more pages and I will show you how this works. So we have basically saved this call to action as a reusable block. And to reuse this, all you need to do is to click on this add block and then browse all. And over here, reusable, you see that this is the reusable block that we have just saved. Let's click on this and you'll see this being published here. And then let's do the same over here. Browse all, reusable, and you see this here. So let's save draft and then we'll preview them. So as you can see, we have three identical reusable blocks. Now by default, all reusable blocks are linked together. So for example, over here, let's say that I want to change the color of this button. So if I save this and I refresh this, you can see that the color of this button has changed. And what happens to the other pages that have used this reusable block? Let's refresh and you see this changed as well. Let's refresh this. So they are basically linked together and any changes to either one of these reusable blocks, they will be reflected throughout the entire website. Now, this is very useful for call to actions because if you somehow change your mind to maybe promote a different product or you want to send your site visitors to another marketing funnel, all you need to do is to amend one of these linked reusable blocks and a change will be reflected everywhere else on the website. Imagine you have hundreds or thousands of pages and all the calls to action are unlinked. You have to visit each and every page of your website to manually amend the call to action. And with this reusable block, you only need to make the change one time. And this will save you tons of time if you manage a website that has tons of content. <music> 
So let's say that this is the template that I've just built and I don't want the changes on this template to be reflected on all the reusable blocks. So what do we do? Let's go to the WordPress editor and then select the reusable block layer over here. And all you need to do is to go over here, convert to regular blocks. This is very important. You need to select the reusable block layer before this will show. So convert to regular blocks and whatever changes you make to this will not be reflected on other reusable blocks. So for example, if I delete this image and I'll just publish this and let's refresh this, you can see that the image is gone. But if I refresh this, the image is still around for these two other pages because we have unlinked this template from the reusable block. I hope you get what I mean. Now, let me sum this up. Reusable blocks has two functions. You can basically use the link reusable blocks to easily manage the content spread across your entire website. So if all the reusable blocks are linked together, you only need to amend one reusable block and it will reflect on all the other pages and that will save you a lot of time. The other use of the reusable block is basically for you to create templates and all you need to do is to remember to unlink it or convert it to regular blocks before you do any adjustments. Now as you rely on reusable blocks more and more, you're gonna have a way to manage them. Because for example over here, the name of this reusable block is called Untitled Reusable Block. And every time you save a reusable block, the default name is Untitled Reusable Block. So you basically need to give this a name, otherwise it defeats the purpose because you won't know which to choose if there are so many of them with the same name. So you can either change the reusable block name over here. Let's say this is call to action number one. And whenever you save something where there is a reusable block, they will prompt you this, whether you want to save the reusable block as well. So you want to check this box and save it. And then this will be called call to action number one. So if you go over here, this is where the call to action is linked. Let us refresh this. If you click on this and you expand it out, the name of this reusable block has been changed. Now, the other way to manage reusable blocks and to see the full list of reusable blocks or templates you have created is to do this. Click on add block, go to browse all and go to reusable blocks. And over here, you can see that manage all reusable blocks. Click on this and it will bring you to the list of reusable blocks you have created. And unfortunately, there is no easy way to reach this page on the WordPress dashboard. You need to go through the pages as I've shown you. Otherwise, you have to install a separate plugin for that, which I don't recommend because there is no point in installing a plugin that provides one feature. And from here, you can create new reusable blocks by clicking on this add new. So instead of creating reusable blocks through the articles and pages, you can do it here. So let's say this is call to action number two, and then let's use this call to action. And then you want to convert this to regular blocks, but now you want to change this to another image. And there you go. What you want to do is to save this and then go back and you'll see this reusable block created. So if you want to use the call to action number two, you got to refresh. So let's say I already know the name of the block forward slash call to action number two. We have this here, select this and we are done. Now, what if I want to reuse this template on another website? Can we do that? Let's check it out. So now, as you can see, I have two different websites over here. And let's test if I can copy this entire call to action template over to another website. So let's do this copy and let's go over here to the new website and paste this. So now the problem here is because the website on the left is installed with the cadence blocks, but over on the right, there is no plugin installed. So if I want to make this work, I have to install the same block plugins. And let me refresh this. And there we go. Once we have installed the same block plugins on both websites, we can copy and paste to each other. And from here, you can create a reusable block on this template for this website. Now, there is another way for you to export all the reusable blocks on this website on the left to the website on the right. So to do that, let's visit the list of reusable blocks. 
And then as you hover, you will see this export as JSON. Click on this. And then you want to save the file. And this has been downloaded. Now over to the website on the right. Let's visit the reusable blocks as well. We have not created one. So we have to do so before that tab will appear. So let's browse all. We got this reusable blocks here. Now let's manage all of them. So as you can see over here on the reusable blocks page, there is this import from JSON. Let's click on this, let's browse, and over here at the downloads, this is the reusable block file we have exported. So let's select this and import. Let's refresh and you will see this here. So if we go to the page and add a reusable block, we can see this here. So this is how you use block templates across different websites. You can either do the copy and paste between different websites, or if you have lots of reusable blocks that you want to reuse on other websites, you can just export all the JSON file for all the reusable blocks from one website and then import it to another website. So this is very helpful for all freelancers or someone who manages a lot of websites and wants consistency. So I hope this short tutorial will help you use the Gutenberg block editor much easier and more more efficiently and if you find this helpful i hope you can smash that thumbs up button for the youtube algorithm and if you have any other questions regarding the ease of use for gutenberg feel free to leave a comment down below now if you are totally new to gutenberg i think the best way for you to go is to practice and i have created several step-by-step -step tutorials and a playlist is here i will show you how to build pages from scratch like a pro if you follow along any of these tutorials to a t i'm pretty sure you will become an advanced gutenberg user in no time all the Best to you, take care and stay safe.